Hello friends, this is Johan coming to get to you again from the comfort of my home kitchen. Um, we've done a couple of videos now in this unscripted series, most of them involving me burning my head more or less off with uh, chilies. And well, um, it's Friday night tonight and uh, I thought I'd try something a little different, uh, speak a bit about something that, or another thing that's very, very close to my heart, uh, which would be uh, spirits, in this case, whiskey. Um, for those of you who follow my blog, thank you. Um, <laughs> You will know that I just spent some time in Scotland and obviously it's pretty hard to visit Scotland without uh, seeing a bit of whiskey. Uh, I do not however want to talk about Scottish whiskey today. Um, I actually want to talk about Danish whiskey, not only Danish whiskey but uh, local Danish whiskey as in whiskey that has been distilled and aged well uh, less than a mile from here actually uh, at our local uh, Trollen distillery. Um, and you, you might be thinking already, well, uh, Danish whiskey, that is pretty new. <laughs> and you are right, it's not only new, it's also uh, a pretty rare and a pretty expensive kind of thing. Um, basically, uh, whiskey product production is not the easiest thing in the world to do. Uh, I mean, you first of all, you have to... You, you have to brew a mash of some sort and then you have to uh, let that ferment for, for a while. Once that is done and you reach some alcohol level, you need to distill it at least once, probably more. And then once that is done, you need to put it in casks and let it age uh, at least three years for it to uh, officially be whiskey according to law. Um, and during which period, of course, uh, because of the high alcohol content in the uh, whiskey, uh, most of it will be actually lost to evaporation. Uh, creating what we call the angel share, which is basically the alcohol that just evaporates off the casks and then never to return. Um, so <laughs> whiskey uh, production, really, really complicated, really expensive process. Um, basically, you try, well, you, you make one production and then you let it lay dormant for at least three years, hoping something good will come out of it, uh, during which time, of course, you can't make any money off it. And then once you actually can, you have to bottle and then everything and, and so on. So obviously, uh, that is a bit of an easier process for the uh, very big distilleries in Scotland who do millions of barrels of whiskey. Uh, it's a very non, or it's a very complicated process for, uh, small town distilleries such as our local one here doing like small batches. Uh, so obviously this bottle here by me uh, is not only a little more rare, but also a little more expensive than your average whiskey. Um, this half liter bottle here probably set me back um, about twice of what a uh, normal bottle of decent uh, Scottish whiskey would have cost me. But you know what, I visited the distillery, I got the t-shirt, or in this case the polo shirt, and I got one of these as well, you know, to support our uh, local guys doing what they, or trying to do what they do best, which is produce some awesome local small scale uh, kind of things. Um, so is it worth it? Well, as you can probably see, this uh, bottle here is still not opened. Uh, so I don't know, but I thought I'd, I'd, I'd figure out along with you, um, see what this thing is all about. Um, as you can probably see, this is an old number two, uh, Calling Street Whiskey. Um, you can sort of guess where people are drawing their inspiration from with a name like that, can't you? Uh, if not, it might have something to do with old number seven or a guy by the name of Jack, uh, last name Daniels. Um, this is, I believe, an American inspired whiskey uh, rather than a Scottish inspired whiskey. Uh, the reason I believe that is I can tell that by reading the label that there's quite a large content of rye in this bottle. Um, normally Scottish whiskey, so-called single malt whiskeys, are made uh, purely with uh, malted barley uh, which is then brewed and fermented, uh, well, fermented, brewed and um, distilled into whiskey. This one has rye in it as well. Um, I'm not really sure how much. It doesn't specifically say that this is a rye whiskey, so uh, I'm I'm guessing it's somewhere below 50%. Uh, but I do have a good authority that the that Michael, the master distiller, who, distiller who did this, is a very big fan of uh, rye in his whiskeys. Uh, so I'm I'm sure there's some in there. Um, and the reason why Michael, uh, being the 
stand-up kind of guy that he is and the, and the good human being that he is uh, likes rye in his whiskeys because it does add, I, I feel as well, add a lot of um, fruity flavors and aromas to the, to the finished product as well. Uh, but I could rant on forever. I probably already have. Uh, let's see if I can actually get this guy open and uh, see what it is. What we got here, um, this by the way is a uh, three-year-old whiskey, um, so it's barely whiskey as you can probably see if I get closer here. The color is sort of pale amber, um, meaning that it hasn't spent as, lot, uh, as much time in casks as uh, other whiskeys have. Normally they are released at around the 10 to uh, 12 year mark. Obviously this hasn't had the time, this was distilled into um, 2012 and bottled um, not too long ago, actually here in uh, 2015. Um, and there's some amazing aromas coming off this already. Um, let's just uh, this Friday after all. Oop, I should do it. So color, yeah, it's it's a beautiful color uh, as you can see. Um, it's not too dark, but for three years, this is this is pretty smashing. Um, smell it. Oh, there's some there's some definite sweetness coming off this. Um, some fruitiness as well, uh, not in a mature dried fruit, uh, stewed fruit kind of way, but in, in like a fresh flowery kind of fruitiness. Um, there's some 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 distinct alcohol coming off this as well. I think this is followed at about uh, forty five percent, if not mistaken. Yeah, forty five percent or ninety proof to you Americans, um, which is three years. Uh, the alcohol probably hasn't had time to integrate that well into it uh, in, into the mix already, and uh, it does come. It, it it does show on the smell, but it's not like. In, it's not an uncomfortable burn like a straight up vodka or a white rum would be, but you know, let's try it. Cheers guys. Yeah, I'm hurrying up in the swallowing part here. I didn't really want to do that, but um... <laughs> I mean, there's got to be me doing some talking as well. This is, um, I actually wanted to keep this in my mouth. It's, it's really good. As I said, there's, there's a definite whiff of alcohol in here, uh, 45% and it's very young still. So you, you do get sort of that like warming. It's not an uncomfortable burn, but there's this definite uh, warmth, uh, to the back of the throat and uh, the top of the mouth. Um, but there's just so much going on in here. There, there's, it's so fruity. Um, Sort of sweet as well. I'm guessing. I'm guessing that's the high rye content as well. But playing a bit of sweetness there, uh, as well as, as, as uh, some malt characters as well. And it's uh, wow. This is actually. I'm not just saying this because I like the guy, but this is actually. This is really surprisingly good. Um, there's. Um, you know what I'll do. I'll. I'll um, I'll take some more time with this in a notebook and I'll do some tasting notes and I'll do like a proper a blog post on this, but it's for a three year old whiskey. This is amazing. There's like, you get the characteristics of the wood, uh, from the oak cast coming through. Uh, you get a, a slight amount of toastiness already. Um, there's, there's an amazing, like sweet fruitiness to it. Uh, it's like, I don't know, I'm, saying, I'm, I'm inclined to say apple, like like uh, red skinned apples. Um, there's an amazing oil, oiliness. Uh, it just coats the inside of your mouth. Um, wow. Good job, Michael. Um, G views, or I'll have some more. I'll have some more notes on um, on the blog as well, um, within the next few weeks or so. I'm just gonna try and add just. I don't have this glass of water sitting around just to the cold fancy like and responsible drinker and whatnot. Um, I, I'm actually going to try to add a bit of our local uh, water to the mix um, because the alcohol is just a little too intense right now for me to, to really get the flavor. So this is probably going to spill all over, but bear with me. Yep, there we go.
You didn't see that, right? This is live and unscripted after all. Um, so yeah, there you go. I just added water to whiskey. Um, and despite what, what some of you may think, that's actually not a crime. Uh, the Scots do it all the time. Um, the thing is, when, when you do add water to uh, whiskey, at least when you add a reasonable amount of water to whiskey, it doesn't so much dilute as it, as it actually helps bring out some flavors uh, and aromas. Um, what it does, it will usually subdue the alcohol very slightly, uh, taking off the most of the burn, um, and that way letting you try, that way letting you better taste uh, the other flavors in there. Um, so you can add water. What you shouldn't do. Uh, unless you're like some sort of savage, is add ice to your whiskey because ice cools the, uh, the whiskey down, thereby drowning out some of the flavors rather, uh, rather than accenting them. Um, and on that note, another thing you shouldn't do is buy those stupid fucking whiskey rocks that you put in the freezer and then you're supposed to make your drink cool without diluting it up. Oh, same fucking deal. <laughs> it's not the dilution that's the problem, it's bringing down at the temperature, uh, which makes like your palate numb to the flavors that are in here. But Friendly advice here. Yeah, that's so much better. Um, you get, I, I don't get the burn now, but I get so much more of the like apple, apple like flavors, the fruitiness, um, the cask, those kind of things. This is going to be. I, I have a feeling this is going to be really good and like another three, five, seven years or so. Um, I do hope Michael has some cask stove behind of this that he didn't bottle the entire thing because this, this honestly, this does have potential, uh, I would say. Um, is it worth uh, double the price tag of a normal bottle of whiskey? Uh, well, you know, I'll, let, I'll, I'll leave it for you to decide that um, because all sorts of people have all sorts of opinions. Um, whiskey, especially when made in small scale and uh, with a bit of age to it, is like an insanely expensive thing because the whole uh, production process. Uh, but, you know, having a bottle of whiskey that not everybody owns, that's like, that's a pretty, that's a pretty rad thing, man. Um, it's so great to bring some people home and be able to, to uh, like give them something that no one else has. And I mean, um, with all respect, all due respect to the major brands, they do have some awesome stuff out there uh, that is pretty rare, that is pretty old, and that is pretty expensive. But for my money, uh, being able to like take this sh showcase this small scale um, local thing over, say, an eighteen or twenty one year old Glenfiddich, uh, I think that's just so much more fun. But you know, that's a matter of opinion, and this is mine. Um, anyways. Thanks for uh, thanks for sticking through my rambles here on a um, Friday night. Uh, this has been a most awesome experience. Um, I will do a more in detail blog post about this uh, in a not so rambling kind of manner. But uh, there we go, my first whiskey tasting. Um, I'm still getting used to this concept. So guys, thanks again for uh, for watching, for commenting, for egging me on, for not making fun of my terrible terrible American accent and my umming and uhing. Um, I do appreciate it and uh, I hope to bring you more of this stuff. Um, cheers.